So this is the uh, primary process for spiritual development, Kali Yuga. Yeah. So uh, the name itself uh, comes from a certain verse uh, in the Mahaprana. So that's Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Sudra Nichi Mokto Vinatvam Nama Nami No. So this, uh, this show says that the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are non different. So Krishna is Chintamani and the name is Chintamani. Krishna is Chintamani, you need to switch to Chintamani. So I think it was yesterday I explained that the, uh, we have a desire tree, and when you ask anything from the desire tree, it manifests. So we also got a, a gem, and you hold onto the gem and you make a wish, and the wish comes true. So money means gem, chinta means thought. It's a So it is a wish fulfilling gem. Okay, so in other words, Krishna can fulfill all your wishes. Krishna <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anything material, anything spiritual. And name is non different, so name is like Chintamani also. You can get anything from the holy name. Okay, so um, Krishna has a particular form or vigraha. Uh, and that form is composed of rasa. Yeah. So, a rasa um, means like a relationship that gives rise to a, uh, an experience of bliss. Rasa means a relationship that gives rise to an experience of bliss. So, it means a loving relationship. Yeah. So, Krishna is the personification of all loving relationships. Krishna is the personification of all loving relationships. But, these are spiritual relationships. We also have rasa in the material world. So, of course, we try to get rasa from things. So, we try to enjoy objects like food or whatever. And, of course, food has rasa, it has taste. <laughs> so, it's a rasa of some sort. But, of course, we have many objects that we get some enjoyment from. But our ultimate enjoyment comes from relationships. Well, of course, we have a relationship with the object, but it's a one-way relationship because the object's not conscious. <laughs> so we get a higher enjoyment from an object which is conscious, that is a living being. And we particularly get a very high type of enjoyment from a relationship with another person. Yeah. So a lot of the activities in the world are based on this. We do all these activities to establish a relationship. And we get rasa. Uh, we had a marriage today, yeah? Relationship. <laughs> and then you expect to get rasa. <laughs> of course, we could be single and we think, okay, be happy. But the expectation is by that relationship, that rasa, we get higher enjoyment. There were four we will sacrifice so much for that relationship, including working and whatever we have to do. Yeah. So, 
жертваме толкова много неща да работим тежко за тази отношение. However, of course, in the material world, this is glorified. Разбира се, в материалния свят това е нещо, което се възпалява. So the ultimate goal is to have a very happy married life. So you'll see that all the stories end up like that. Of course, they end up the opposite sometimes also. So that is the problem. We expect to get the happiness, but usually we end up with a lot of problems. Това е проблема, че ние очакваме да получим щастие, но обикновено се показва, че има много проблеми. So that is material rasa. Това е материална раса. It is temporary and subject to a lot of problems. Тя е времена и много проблеми. So, Krishna is the source of spiritual rasa, which is eternal. Krishna е източникът на духовната раса, която е вечна. So none of the problems that we associate with material relationships are there in the Supreme Lord. При Кришна няма нито на тези проблеми, които се свързани с материалните отношения. So, the ultimate form of all those relationships is Кришна. Крайната форма на всички тези отношения е Кришна. And it's all eternal. Читане Раса Виграха. И всичко това е вечно. Читане Раса Виграха. So, all the different forms of the Lord, Кришна е considered to be the complete manifestation for it. Therefore, he's called Пурна. Всички форми на Бога Кришна се приема за пълното предложение, за това той се навича Пурна. So he manifests all sorts of qualities. Той проявява най-различни качества. And some of these qualities are not manifested even in the other forms of God. Някои от тези качества не се проявява дори от другите форми на Бога. So therefore he's called Пурна or complete. Това той се навича Пурна или съвършен, завършен. Though he displays many qualities, These are not material qualities. And generally we say we think of qualities, we mean material qualities. So we say uh, Krishna is blue or uh, Krishna is, uh, has a graceful form. We'll think of blue color in the material world and a graceful material form. Почувам, че Кришна е син, като има много красива форма, ние ще си мислим за синия материален свят и за красивата материална форма. But the qualities in the Supreme Lord are pure. They're not material at all. They're called Suda, pure. Но качествата на Кришна са нематериални, те са на вече чуда, чисти. Now, the Supreme Lord, he is pure, but he can manifest himself in the material world. Духовни Бог е чист, но той може да се прояви в материалния свят. And we call that avatar. He comes into the material world as incarnation or avatar. Ние наричам това avatar. Той е в материалния свят, като инкарнация. And everybody can see him. И всеки може да го види. But he remains spiritual. И той е остава духовен. He doesn't get contaminated by anything in the material world. Той не се е измърсял от нищо в материалния свят. That's why it says, Ниче Мокто, he's ever liberated, even though he comes in the material world. So that is Krishna. Name is not different from Krishna. So if we chant the holy name, we can realize in the name Krishna with all of his rasa. And we can get highest bliss. So that is the meaning of Hari Nam Shantam. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur spends a chapter on philosophy. So, generally, we don't like philosophy. It's all dry. But we do need some basic um, guidelines by which we can practice. And so we have to establish what is real. And we also have to establish uh, the supreme real. Yeah. So we call that supreme uh, real the Ishwara, the supreme lord, the supreme independent conscious entity. Ние наричаме тази върховна реалност Ишвара или върховното, независимо от съзнато същество. So that is one real entity. Това е едно истинско същество. Then he has three shaktis. Той има три шакти. 
One is a spiritual Shakti, Antaranga Shakti or Chit Shakti. This Shakti energy manifests a name, form, qualities, and activities of the Supreme Lord. And the spiritual world, the abode of the Lord, the Dhamma. So that is a spiritual energy. Then we have a marginal energy or Tatasta Shakti. And through this Tatasta Shakti, we get the jivas, all of the infinite number of Atmas. So the jiva, like the Lord, is a conscious entity. So conscious entity means that they have the ability to know things and know their self. Uh, so the Lord can do that and the Jiva can do that. What's the difference? The difference is the Jiva's consciousness and whatever he does is dependent on the Supreme Lord's will. So the Lord is independent, the Jiva is dependent. Yeah. And uh, the Lord is described as everywhere, all pervading. The Jiva is described as infinitesimal, little small particle. Yeah. So, Lord is one, Jivas are infinite number. So, there's a big difference in one sense. <laughs> uh, so, though the Jiva is dependent, uh, the Lord gives him some free will or some independence. And the Jiva has a capacity to experience happiness. So the Jiva is called Tatashta or borderline because he shares uh, qualities like the Supreme Lord, but it's not actually the Supreme Lord, and he also shares qualities with material energy. So as a small particle of consciousness, the Jiva can be overcome by ignorance. The Supreme Lord can enter the material, is never overcome by ignorance. Okay, so the third energy is called the Bahiranga or external energy. So this gives rise to uh, the material universes. It consists of uh, many things, including prakriti, that is the substance of matter. And this expands into all sorts of elements that create universes and bodies for the living entities. It is unconscious. Very different from the Jiva and the Supreme Lord. It's also dependent on the Supreme Lord. Creation of the material world cannot take place without the will of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. So, the Lord, of course, is never affected by property, but the Jiva can be. <coughs> So the jiva is affected by matter in such a way that he is covered by it. That means the jiva gets a material body. And in that material body, we think I am the material body. And we do all sorts of activities to get our rasa. <laughs> using our senses. <laughs> so this is the nature of the jiva in ignorance. He's stuck in the material with the material body. 
Каква е природата на душата в невежда? Тя е поставена в материална тяло. Окей, so we can can a diagram that very simply we have the supreme lord and we have a shakti we have the chit shakti we have the jiva shakti and we have the achit shakti има много просто диаграми има да помни боки има chit shakti jiva shakti и achit или материална so on one side we got the spiritual world the other side we got the material world And we get the jivas under ignorance, they got bodies in the material world. So, the purpose of the scriptures is to tell us how to get from the material world to the spiritual world. Uh-huh. So we should get out of ignorance and we should manifest a spiritual body to perform activities in the spiritual world. What do we do in the spiritual world? We have a relationship with the Lord with Rasa. So we experience happiness there which is eternal. Yeah, so we go from a place where we have material Rasa which is temporary to a place with spiritual Rasa which is eternal. От материално място, където имаме време на материална раса, ние отиваме на духовно място, където имаме вечна раса. Окей, so the scriptures are trying to give us a process to go there, eh? to the uh, spiritual realm. Писанията ни дават процеса, че с който може да отидем там, на духовно място. So the Vedic literature, literatures give us different methods according to our level of consciousness and our qualification. The lowest method is called karma yoga. And the immediate goals are material enjoyment, artha and kama. Support your body and get some enjoyment, kama. Of course, everybody in the material world is doing that already. <laughs> but the feature of karma yoga is you can get your enjoyment, but certain rules and regulations are there called dharma. Yeah. So some activities are forbidden, they are called sin. Yeah. And some activities are recommended, they are called punya. А някои дейности са препоръчени и те се наричат пуня. So by doing, avoiding this and doing the punya, you can get more enjoyment in the material world life after life. Избягвайки греховете, извършвайки грубости, дейности човек може да получи по все повече и повече наслаждение в материалния свят. And you can even go to other higher planets and enjoy longer lifespan. Дори може да ти деш на повиши планети, да се наслаждаваш на по-дълг живот. So I spoke yesterday last night about easy journey to other planets. So this is one method you use, karma yoga. You can go to other planet and enjoy very nicely for many, many lifetimes. Okay. Anyway, the purpose of the karma yoga is to raise you gradually from Tamagun to Rajagun to Satvagun. And going through different varnas, Sudra, Vaisha, Kshatriya, and Brahmana. The Primish Preservation to Varni, Sudra, Vaishya, Kshatri, Brahmana. And when you get to Satvagun and Brahminical status, uh, then there's a very interesting phenomena in the uh, Satvagun. And so Sattva Gun manifests vidya or knowledge. That means Atma Gyan, we can be aware that we are Atma, not body. So we become qualified for Gyana Yoga. So the goal of Jnana Yoga is to fix our realization on Atma, I am Atma, I am not body. And if we can do that nicely, we get liberation from birth and death, all bodies in the material world. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says better than Jnana Yoga is Stanga Yoga. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, 
He doesn't say particularly why. <laughs> but one reason can be that jnana yoga in itself is mainly intellectual. We use our intelligence to analyze the Vedanta Sutras and Upanishads and fix ourselves on Atma. That's a little difficult for most people. Huh? So the yoga process is a little more practical. Huh? We utilize the body and the breathing and the mind to eventually destroy the subtle body and get Atma realization. Okay, so if we can understand we're not the Atman, etc., then at that stage uh, we can proceed to another realization. So we have the Atmas, that's definitely spiritual, but then we have the Supreme Lord. He is even more important spiritual enemy. So that's the next uh, yoga, the bhakti yoga. Uh, so bhakti yoga, we recognize atma, but we also recognize supreme lord. Bhakti yoga So before the bhakti yoga process, we can get to the spiritual world. <laughs> If we follow the yoga process or the jnana process, we get out of the material world, but we don't make it to the spiritual world. So, uh, the scriptures describe all of these processes uh, so that the jiva. The Atma can gradually develop for many, many lifetimes to go through the Sudra, to the Vaisha, Kshatri, to Brahman, to Jnana Yoga, to Stanga Yoga, then come to Bhakti Yoga, then go to spiritual world. It's a very slow process. So in chapter 12 of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna recommends better than doing that is just do bhakti yoga. No gradual process. Just start with bhakti and go bhakti, 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 bhakti spiritual world. Finished. <laughs> it's a much quicker process. Yeah? So, as I said, that you, if to get to the jnana, you have to come to sattva gun first. It's many, many lifetimes doing this karma yoga to get to sattva gun to do the jnana, even. And then you have to spend many lifetimes doing jnana and yoga to understand that you're atma. So, it's a long process. So bhakti yoga does not require that qualification that you have to be in sattva guna. You can be in any guna as a human being and you can begin the process. Bhakti yoga does not require that qualification you have to be in sattva guna. You can be in The only qualification is faith. That means recognition and conviction in the existence of a Supreme Lord that we would serve. And that may arise in a person in Tamagun, Rajagun or Sattvagun. So, if we have the faith, we practice bhakti, it is called sadhana. Uh, and the goal of sadhana is to get to bhava. And, and from bhava we go to prema. And with prema we're qualified for spiritual world. Okay, so in bhakti yoga, uh, as I said, Lord Chaitanya has introduced the name, chanting of the holy name as the main process. So, we do many processes of bhakti like deity worship and hearing and sadhu sangha and uh, many other things, but the main process 
uh, for spiritual advancement is chanting the holy name. Ние извършваме много процеси в бхакти, като обожаваме божествата, слушаме и така нататък. Обаче главният процес е да спиваме по So bhakti and chanting the holy name are processes that have never given up even when we attain the goal. Бхакти и повтарянето на святото име, тези два процеса никога не биват изоставени, дори когато постигнем целта. So the whole, uh, what is so special about the holy name that we choose that out of all the processes of bhakti? Какво е толкова специално за святото име, че ние избираме него uh, измежду всички процеси на бхакти? So, uh, we can explain that the Lord, as I said, had his shaktis by which he manifests his name or qualities and activities. That's the Sandini Shakti. Through that the Lord manifests his name, form, qualities and activities. Yeah. Of course, that's eternal. It's not that the one time the Lord didn't manifest any Shakti and then he suddenly manifests. He's always manifesting those Shakti. So therefore his name is eternal, his form is eternal, his qualities are eternal, his activities are eternal. Богът винаги е проявява тези шахти и затова неговото име, форма, качество и заболение са вечни. Не се състоява. Да. Сега, какво Господ прави е, в името на В името на Бога, Богът поставя формата, качеството и дейността. И това е easiest approach to realizing Krishna. Това е най-лесният метод за реализиране на Кришна. If we chant the name, we can realize Krishna's form, qualities, activities and eventually rasa. Ако успяваме с фето на Бога, тогава ние може да реализираме неговото име, форма, качества, дейности и раса. So that is what we mean when we say the name and the Lord are non-different. If we chant the name, then we can realize Krishna. However, there are different types of names. We have primary names. These are the main names. These will describe the pastimes of the Lord in the spiritual world and His wonderful qualities and form. So Krishna is a name, Govinda is a name, Shamsundar is a name, Govardhanadari is a name. These are all primary names. Krishna, Govinda, Govardhanadari, Shamsundar, these are the основни имена. So these names will lead to Prema. These имена ще доведат до Prema. Then we have secondary names. Имаме второстепенни имена. They describe the Lord, but they describe his limited activities in terms of creation of the material world and destruction of the material world, etc. Те описват Бога, но описват неговите ограничени дейности във връзка с сътворяването на материалния свят и дейности. This, of course, is a very common um, uh, concept of God. God is the creator, God is all-powerful, God is all-knowing. So these are very, very general. Има някои много основни концепции за Бога, като Бога, който е творецът на материалния свят, So, we can, so by chanting those names we can get material elevation, eventually we can get liberation. Of course, the devotees don't want liberation, they want prema, so we choose primary names. Okay, so there's different types of chanting. One is called Namaparad. So in Nama Parad, we have a lot of misconceptions about Bhakti, the name, and the Lord. Yeah. And generally, we also have some hostility towards the Lord in the process of Bhakti. Or we have very strong material attachments. So Nama Parad is not recommended, we can't progress by that, in fact we can actually destroy Bhakti by that. So, 
So um, a preferable stage is called Namabas. If we chant Namabas, we can slowly progress. Uh, however, uh, there is a lot of ignorance and impurities in this chanting. So the full potency of the name is not manifest. And therefore the progress is slow. Okay. So the recommended process is pseudonym or pure chanting. Uh, so this is not perfection, this is practice within pseudonym. We are not perfect, we still got anartas, but we practice something called sudanam, pure chanting. That means we chant with proper knowledge. That is, as I mentioned previously, we have knowledge of the Supreme Lord, his position, knowledge of the Jiva, knowledge of property and his position, so we have proper knowledge. And though we're not pure, in our bhakti we do not explicitly express our impure desires in praying for material things or liberation or whatever. So it is Sudanam which will eventually lead us to Prema. And the progress is much quicker than with Namabas. Okay. Uh, uh, and if we're chanting Sudanam, even there, there are, you can say, three types. Uh, this, uh, there's a story in the Chaitanya Sharatamrata. Lord Chaitanya was uh, living in Puri and the people of Navadweep would come every year and visit Lord Chaitanya. They would walk, walk, walk for several weeks and come to Puri and stay there for four months and then go back. So one year they came to Puri and then they asked Lord Chaitanya, who is the Vaishnava? And the Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who chants the Holy Name once, he is a Vaishnava. So the devotees heard this and they were rather surprised. <laughs> but they were a little afraid to say anything, so they kept quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and they went back to Navadvip. <laughs> and when they got there, they began talking, talking, talking. What did Lord Chaitanya mean by this? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next year they went to Puri, but then they asked him the same question. Who's a Vaishnava? <laughs> and then he said, anyone who chants constantly, he's a Vaishnava. <laughs> So he, they were satisfied with that. <laughs> they went back to Navadvip. But then they thought, why he gave two different answers? <laughs> so they discussed this and discussed this, and then they went to Puri again the next year. <laughs> and they asked Lord Chaitanya again, who is a Vaishnava? <laughs> and then he said, anyone who inspires others to chant purely, he is a Vaishnava. <laughs> so therefore they understood that Lord Chaitanya was presenting three different uh, categories of pure chanting. <laughs> Okay. So what is the qualification for chanting? Any human being. <laughs> so it can be done even without faith. Uh, we don't call that person a, a devotee or a Vaishnava, but still it has some effect. 
ние наричаме, не наричаме такава личност, преданно да не ли вайшнава, но въпреки това то има някакъв ефект. Yeah. So if we chant without faith and without hostility, the only way that happens usually is accident. Единственият начин, за да може да повтаряме без вяра и без обаче враждебност към Бога, единственият начин за мен е просто по случайност. If we don't have faith, that means we're not looking for anything spiritual, so we won't, you know, chant uh, intentionally. Ако няма вяра, това означава, че ние не търсим нищо духовно, така че няма да повтаряме с някакво силно желание. So accidental will mean that uh, Uh, as, as the case here of Ajamil, he named his son Narayana. So he would call the name of his son Narayana all the time. So he was chanting the name of Narayana, the name of the Lord, but it was actually the name of the son. The incident in that sense means, as in the case of Ajamil, who is the first son of Narayana, and he is always called Narayana, Narayana, but he doesn't have a God, he has a God, but he has a God. So he didn't think of the Lord at all. Така че той изобщо не мисли за Бога. He was just thinking of a son. Той си мисли за сина си. But because he chanted the name of Narayana, all of his karmas, past, present and future, got destroyed. И въпреки това, понеже повтарял името на Нарайана, цялата негова карма, миналата му, бъдещата му и настоящата, била унищожена. And he had a lot of bad karmas because he was very sinful. Той има много, много лоша карма, защото е много грешен. But when the Yamadudas were going to take him, they couldn't touch him. Но когато няма да го да го вземат, те не успели да го докоснат. And the Vishnu Dudas came and said, don't touch him because he has no karma. И Вишнуто ти дошли и казва, не го докосвате, защото той няма карма. So that's a case of accidental chanting with some effect. Това е пример за инцидент на неслучайно повтаряне, което има ефект. So that is a type of Namabas. As I said here, we did this Namabas there. It's a type of Namabas. Well, you know, the video with the Namabas. Okay. So, generally, of course, we get more effect from chanting with faith. That is, heavy intention and favor word. Разбира се, ние получаваме по-голяма полза, ако повтаряме с вяра, с желание и благоприятно настроение. Okay. So, in the chanting process, Faith is the qualification for uh, what, uh, intentional chanting, but other than that, there is not much restriction. So in other words, we don't have to be in Satvagun, we could be in Tamagun or Rajagun, doesn't matter. С други думи, няма нужда да сме в Сатагана, за да повтаряме, ние може да сме там, ама да ли правим на пак на чак. You could be in the Varnashram system, you could be outside the Varnashram system. Може да бъдем в Варнашрам системата или извън нея, пак може да повтаряме. If you wanted to do Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, and Astanga Yoga, you had to be at least in the Varnashram system. Искаш да извършваш Karma Yoga или Gyan Yoga или Astanga Yoga, трябва да бъдеш част от Варнашрам системата. So, the chanting whole name is open for any human being, inside or outside Varnashram, no matter what guna they're in. Успяването на свят тина отворена на всички човешки същества вън или вътре във Варна Шрама, независимо от това, в която гуна се намира. And you can chant the holy name at any place, at any time. Може да повтаряме свят тина и на всяко място, по всяко време. And clean or unclean also is not a consideration. Чист или не чист също не е съоръжение. So it is a very, I can say, a flexible process that everybody can do at all times, in all places. Това е един много разчупен процес, който всеки може да изпълнява по всяко време. So, everybody can chant the holy name, and we said there's not much restriction, etc. But, in order to get prem, prema, we do have to follow some regulations. И въпреки, че всеки може да повтаря свято име, няма много ограничения. За да стигнем према, ние трябва да следваме известни... So, of course, we have to chant primary name of the Lord rather than secondary. Естествено, трябва да повтаряме главните имена на Бога, вместо второ степените. And rather than upper nama parada or nama bas, we have to chant sudanam. И вместо nama parada или nama bas, трябва да повтаряме sudanam. And, as Lord Chaitanya said, one who chants constantly is better white child than one who chants once, so we have to chant constantly also. И както Бог Стане казва, този, който повтаря постоянно е по-добър вършнал от този, който повтаря само веднъж, така че ние трябва да повтаряме свят тина постоянно. And to come to the Sudanam platform, we need devotee association. За да стигна на Sudanam платформата, ние ние имаме нужда от общуване с предаване. And to prevent the anartists from becoming strong, then we have to avoid unfavorable actions and 
perform favorable actions. И за да се предпазим от това нация да станат много силни, ние трябва да се въздържаме от неблагоприятни дейности и да извършваме благоприятни дейности. Ако повтаряме сега, ако имаме под тези условия, тогава ние стигаме до края. Окей. Въпроси? <coughs> in attention during chanting, where it fits in the. Is it, is it part of now bus there? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, actually tomorrow. I'll discuss that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's another uh, presentation called Nama Bas. Okay. And in Nama Bas, we have. Uh, it's a, we can say it's unintentional upper rod. <laughs> <laughs> we have the 10 upper rods. If it's unintentional, it acts more like Nama Bas. And we can slowly progress. So this is the unintentional. Yeah. In other words, non hostile non hostile intentions there. Uh the first beshe uh kde se pispa nebimatan control and maharachu did it by tip now a bus in Maharachu the snip which the warring to a service to put in a cell alexia to stay on a nama bus. Съгледнението е не, не, не е нарочно, не е специално така с такова връждебно настроение извършено, но Бога тогава ние може да го пъти това, че го извършим да напредваме в Бога. In other words, we intentionally be inattentive, intentionally we don't want to chant our rounds, intentionally we don't want to listen to them, etc. like that, then it becomes up or up. Of course, we're inattentive, but we're trying, then it's not considered that. Ако ние нарочно с какво наше собствено желание не слушаме другото момента, ние се разсеймаме, тогава това се счете за нама парада. Ако обаче ние се опитваме да слушаме, обаче не винаги успяваме, тогава това се приема, че не е нарочно. As much as possible. But as I said in Sadhana, obviously nothing is perfect. <laughs> But we still call Sudana, like we have Uttama Bhakti, mm-hmm. or not, we have an artist, etc. So, go on. Mm. Marge, <clears throat> to what degree, or what is the effect of separation in Sudana or chanting? Separation. From Krishna. Um, does it intensify the Sudana if you feel separation or not? Or uh, not well, yeah. Uh, if, if we feel separation from the Lord, that actually is a sign of our attraction. Okay. If we don't have any attraction for the Lord, then we can't feel any separation from uh-huh. the Lord. Okay. So it means the greater we have attraction, so if we get to Nishta and we get to Rushi, we get a Sakti, obviously our feeling of separation from the Lord gets greater and greater. Okay. So that is a sign of our, uh, let's say, the destruction of an artist and the increase of the bhakti. Колко повече раздяла чувстваме се с Кришна, толкова по това означава, че сме толкова по-напреднали, защото не може да чувстваме раздяла с Кришна, ако нямаме привличане към Кришна. И... А не, въпросът не бърваме. Това беше по отношение на въпроса на Враджа, но въпроса да преведаме. Да си преведаваме въпроса. Въпросът ми беше, I'm just translating my question. Въпросът ми беше дали чувството за раздяла с Кришна е важен компонент за мантруването в Суда Нава. Дали чувството за раздяла е важен компонент? Of course, the real separation like Vipra Lumba is it uh, is in prema itself <laughs> because we realize the lord and we separate from him and then we feel that longing this bhi se is ke tabhi pralamba ke mosh bhi speak na na prema na prema is that ni kada realizirame bhogi iskame da no sino da da bhi sne but there's also separation in the past times for instance the pandavas never got to see krishna until quite late after they went to when he went to Dwarka. So but before that they heard about him and they were separate they felt separation from him. It's another type of separation. Uh 
но доста късно всъщност видели Кришна, въпреки че преди това само слушали за него, имали много силно желание да видят. So that's a little bit different from us and Sadhana because <laughs> it's not at the stage of Prema. <laughs> Nevertheless, that feeling of separation impels us to go quicker. And on a very high level of Ambhava, then that separation really impels one. Yeah. So it's explained that some of the when Krishna uh, began the Rasalila, first he played his flute in the autumn season and the full moon, and then the gopis began to run away from their houses, but some got locked up. Се описва как когато Кришна започна да свири на своята плейта през света и гопите започнаха да бягат от своите къщи, обаче някои от тях не успели да бягат и били заключени. So Vishnu Chakravarti explains that those who got locked up were coming through the process of sadhana. Vishnu Chakravarti обяснява, че тези, които били заключени, били стигнали от това ниво чрез процеса на садана. Almost got to perfection, so they were allowed to get born in Raja. <laughs> but they were not quite perfect. So therefore they couldn't go to the Rasa Lila. <laughs> but because of that obstacle and separation from Krishna, they got purified. Но заради тази пречка, която породила такава силно чувство за раздяла с Кришна, те са чистили. So that feeling of separation burned up the last impurities and they attained pure bodies. So they gave up their other body, they attained another body and then they were loved with Krishna. И това чувство за раздяла всъщност и накарало да напреднат, но бързо те напуснали, изгорили тези And we have the case of Narada Muni, the Lord appeared to him once in Baba stage, and so I'm not going to appear to you again, because that separation and longing will purify you until you come to Prema. He didn't appear to him in that lifetime again. Out of that longing, then he got purified and he got to Prema. Има пример с Narada Muni, който на нивото на Баба, има отдача на Бога и Бога му казал, аз няма да се появя повече в този живот при тебе, за да може ти да си пречистиш от това чувство за раздяла и да стигнеш до према. И така една да ми разбива права. Шудена бринг се ступева, да бъде много бързо или бързо. Има ли някакъв дефиниция, какво бързо бързо? Or it could be very relative also. Well, it, it, it depends on uh, many factors. One, of course, is our initial position. We may have done bhakti in our last life, so we could continue from there. Or we have maybe very little, no bhakti, we just begin, we started with faith in this life, right? so that's one thing. Може би ние сме извършили бакти и предишни животи, това е един вариант. Тогава може по-бързо да напредаме или може би в този живот сме разбили шрада. The other is that uh, we may have done some sinful activity, so therefore we get stuck in a, a tamagun body or a rajagun body or something like that also, which may be a little bit of a problem. Може би сме извършили някакви греховни дейности и затова да сме получили тамагуна тяло или раджага на тяло, което може да се окаже известен проблем. And then the other is the association we get in this lifetime. We should get the proper association so we get the correct knowledge so that we can follow the proper process. Друг фактор е общуването, което сме получили в този живот. Ако имаме правилно общуване и получим правилно знание, тогава ние ще можем да напредваме. And of course, if we can get mercy of a very elevated devotee, then that helps us to progress also. И разбира се, ако получим и мисля на много напреднал предан тогава, And the other is the endeavor of the individual. So somehow or other we've decided to put forth great endeavor and great enthusiasm, and then that will help us go quickly.
ако по някакъв начин ние решим да сме много ентусиазирани, да вложим големи сили, тогава ние ще направим по-бързо. Но може да отнеме няколко живота, както виждаме в случая с Барата Махарач, който бил на нивото на баба, не се знае за колко живота е стигнал до там, но от нивото на баба, за да стигне до према, му били необходими три живота. However, the devotees, especially as they advance, do not uh, aspire uh, to get immediate results. Обаче предно даните, особено когато на предна, те всъщност не се стремят да получат а, незабавен резултат. Their very nature is to be feel very fallen and humble, so they don't expect any mercy from the Lord. If they get a little mercy, they feel very fortunate. И те, те се чувстват естествено много а, ниши и недостойни, и затова те не очакват всъщност никаква милост от Бога. И ако получат някаква милост, те много с едно удоволно. And on the other hand, the Supreme Lord actually knows what is best for each jiva and for each devotee. So he may, as it is in the case of Bharat, understand that it is necessary for him to experience the body of a deer in order to go further. So that he put him in a deer body, next lifetime he learned his lesson and he got prema. <laughs> Бог е разбрал, че всичко се много добре за него да получи този опит да бъде в тяло на Елен. Затова той го поставил в такова тяло и тогава Барта Маграч се научи урока и след това напредна много бързо. To get the result finally. Разбира се, Богът може да даде своята безкрайна милост, на който си пожелая и така човек да крипа сида, да, да напредне от нула до, до крайната съвършенство, но той предпочита ние да си изградим нашия път, да минем през всички трудности и така да си заработим. So therefore the крипа сиди is very rare and the sadhana сиди is the most common method. Yeah. It may take some lifetimes. <coughs> И това клипа си да е много необичайно, много рядко, а сада на си да е правило. Може да отнеме някакво живот. Но да бъде фиол, съм се върнал фортун, ако лайф after лайф, ако може да продължи процеса на това. Но предния се чувства много щастлив, ако просто живот с живот може да продължава процеса на това. И да получим устно на това. Махач, ти мисля, че джива има някакви. Common qualities with the matter. What some of them is we know that ignorance. That's the main <laughs> one. <laughs> he is overcome by ignorance and then he gets a body made out of matter as a result. Ultimately he's pure in one sense. But his nature is to get covered up with ignorance and then he gets a body, subtle body, gross body, and all these things. That that's his material nature. <laughs> so he seems to adopt the gunas of material nature as a result. And uh, when we chant, uh, there in the name, there invested the the qualities, the form, mm. the lila of the Lord, and uh, first the qualities are first the name, name the, the rupa, the form. first the rupa. Yeah. So uh, can you give some uh, general ideas how the rupa comes through the name and then the qualities and. Uh, How it the first kind of uh, <laughs> some I mean like uh, uh, like inspiration or like w- what we can aspire for in our uh, boldest dreams and strive for. <laughs> Понеже Махарай спомена за това, че дживата има някои общи черти с материята и кои са тялото черти, Махарай каза, че е главно невежеството, защото дживата е покрита от невежество и затова получава тяло от невежество. И втори въпрос е как точно 
се случва това, че като повтаряме името на Бога и ние не се разкриваме неговата форма. So actually this is described in the Madhuri Thambani. So he describes each stage, you know, like Shraddha, and in Bhajana Kriya, Anartana, Riki, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, and Prema. Всъщност това се описва в Мадури Кнабини, там се описва всички тези етапи от Шрада до Крена. And he describes uh, quite graphically the experience of a person on Bhava and Prema. И там се описва доста подробно сещанията на, на човек, който е на нивото на Бава и Према. So the actual manifestation of the Lord's form comes in Bhava stage. Истинското проявление на усещането за формата на Бога се появява на Бава. And gradually all of his senses become active so that he can see the Lord, then he can hear the Lord, then he can taste the Lord and all, all the senses begin to experience the Lord. Постепенно всички сетива се събуждат, духовни сетива и така той преднавява, не може да види Бога, да го чуе, да го вкуси, да го усети. So before that, in a sakti stage, he said there is like a shadow form on the box of the form, so suddenly you may get a realization of a form, kind of, but it's not the exact form, but it's a sudden flash of it. And then the only actual form is revealed in Mama stage. А преди това на Асакти може да се получи такава внезапна реализация на някакъв вид форма на Бога, която не е точната форма, но много почти като изключително. So in Bhava stage in the form and gradually some of the qualities and activity of the manifest, but the full manifestation comes in Prema and then the full rasa develops there in Prema. На Баба започва да се реализира истинската форма, а която вече наистина се проявява напълно на према и тогава вече започва да се развиват отношения на разната. So I think he describes it when you first see the form, then you faint. It's kind of unconscious because of the form. It's the beauty of the form is such that you faint. И там се описва, че когато за този път видиш формата на Баба, друг према да не припада. And as each Sense becomes activated, you faint again and faint again and faint again. Когато Аджа Мила повтаря на Райана, това, което можах да разбера, че понеже той вика сина си с любовно, затова той не извършва откъдвление към святото има. И тази съставка на едната, всъщност, тя премахва всички съставления, които просто изпрямо в тъкъм сина, правилно си между сина. Е, да остъкам сина му, да, е съставка правилно. Да, понеже той, той вика не Бога, а сина си, но въпреки това той вика с любовно. So when uh, Ajumila calls uh, his son uh, with love and affection, uh, is this love and affection actually the factor that nullifies the offenses? And that's why there is no offense? No, he, he had no offense because when he chanted, he was not thinking of the Lord. Negatively, he was not thinking of anything offensive about Vaishnava, not thinking of anything about Bhakti or anything. He just called the Sundar Ayan finish. So, no offense. Не е това, а просто защото когато се повтаря от това име на Райна, той не мисли нищо негативно, нито за Бога, нито за Према на Дайн. Той просто повтаря от това име. Whereas a person like Shishupala, he would call the name of Krishna and he would be filled with hatred. So that's offensive. Yeah? Докато личност като Шишопала, когато той повтаря името на Кришна, той го повтаря с гняв и това е проблем. Това е въпросът в Бакте, да имате готи за Македония. Първият въпрос, по какво може да познаем един вярващ от един невярващ човек? Вторият въпрос, ако даден предан отдален на първо или на второ стъпало, без да иска ли е нарочно, удари няколко пъти друг предан отдален. Този предан отдален ще може да отиде при 
Кришна лока пред Кришна или трябва още веднъж и няколко пъти да се прерадват. Този, който е ударил. Този, който е помолника. Окей, първо първа въпроса. How do we distinguish between uh, faithful and faithless person? Well, as I said, faith means that they have the uh, conviction that comes from the Atma and the existence of the Lord and that I should worship the Lord. Вярва човек на чая, че той има убеждение, което идва от сръбнишата, че Бога съществува и че аз трябва да служа на Бога. So this is an inclination of the soul, not something mental. Това всъщност е склонност на душата, а не нещо свързано с ума. So a faithless person has no acceptance of the existence of God or a relationship with God. А безбожният човек, той няма концепция за съществуването, той не приема съществуването на Бога или че има някакви отношения с Него. Second question. If uh, one devotee... You'll find you'll find the word. On the first or second stage. If a devotee on the first or second stage. What's the job first uh, or the third word? Well, if we commit aparad, then we have to somehow cancel the aparad, nullify the aparad. The aparad has to be cancelled by uh, first uh, recognizing that we've done something wrong. Това може да се постигне. Първо, като ние признаем, че разберем, че сме извършили нещо погрешно. And second, we have to go and apologize and ask forgiveness from the other person. И второ, ние трябва да се извини и да помолим за прошка от този друг човек, който сме били. And hopefully that person accepts your apology. И да се надяваме, че тази личност приеме извинение. And then next, you have to continually chant the holy name. И следващото нещо е, че трябва постоянно да повтаряме святото име. With a feeling of repentance. С чувство на разкаяние. Mm-hmm. So in that way, gradually, the effect of the offense will go and uh, the obstruction to bhakti will go. В този начин, резултат от оскърблението постепенно ще изчезне и пречката пред бхакти ще и също постепенно ще изчезне. So that goes for not just a person at the beginning stage, any stage. Това не въжи само за личността, която е на начинаещите нива, а за всяко ниво. And in fact, the effect of Aparad is so great that uh, it may be committed long ago, but even if you get to the stage of Bhava, it can cause you a disturbance. И ефектът от Aparad е толкова сериозен, че Апарадата може да е извършена много-много отдавна, но дори ако стигнем до нивото на Бава, So by the end of Asakti stage, generally all the karmas have been destroyed. Uh, so what is left in the Baba stage is some effects of previous aparabs. Mm-hmm. So it is explained that uh, Bharat was in Baba stage. But then he became attracted to a deer and he forgot to worship Vishnu. After seeing Vishnu. He saw Vishnu. And then he was worshipping. And then he forgot all about him. And he worshipped a deer instead. How did he do that? So the answer is a previous aparad from long ago that suddenly disturbed his heart and therefore he worshipped he kept being attracted to the deer. And he thought of a deer when he was dying. If, if it takes a <coughs> generally monk and usually many lifetimes, why would um, Shilabhad Siddhanta Saraswati and Shilabhad Prabhupada also repeatedly really encourage us to finish the business in this life? And well, it's possible in some cases, but it's not so common. <laughs> <in some cases. laughs> 
<laughs> Anything is possible. <laughs> By the mercy of the and Krishna, it's possible. <laughs> Ако като Махараш каза, ако обикновено отнема има някои живота, защото тогава Бакти Сан се разхвати Кромец, винаги се окружавали, за да свършим работа с един живот, Махараш каза, да, възможно е, в принцип, но всичко е възможно, да не стане Бога, но как обикновено? Но не е толкова, не се случва толкова често. Тук нали, сега се става въпрос за сакти, че когато се стигне до сакти, там вече а, кармата се изчиства и ние минаваме в нивото баба. И въпросът ми е такъв, а, ние когато постиме на Икадаши, ние удовлетворяваме Кришна, но когато чета за Икадашите, там се казва, че унищожават се всички видове грехове и всички цялата видове карма, които човек някога е натрупал. Какво, няма ли нищо общо с това нещо? Well, if uh, the results of past karmas are destroyed only by the end of the sakti, then how do we reconcile this with the statements that if you passed on Kadashi day, then all of your karma is gone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, we have the general statements and they are true. Uh, however, just as in the case of uh, bhakti, it can go fast, but it goes a little slow because of aparabhas. Факти процес е много бърз, но той може да се забави заради апарада. So if we commit apparats, then these processes slow. Ако извършим разкъбрение, тогава този процес е бавен. So the reason that uh, Ajamil got all of his karma is right with no apparats. Причината, поради която Ajamila унищожил цялата си карма, защото няма възкъбрение. So if he had some apparats, then the process would have been slow, he would have had some karma. <laughs> А ако извършим скъпление, тогава процесът ще да се забави и той ще да има някакъв карма. So that is again with a cardus here or anything, it destroys karmas, but again if we have apparatus, then it may slow the process somewhat. И това говори за кадеши, кадеши унищожава карма, поста на кадеши унищожава карма, това обаче ако сме извършили скъпление, те могат да продължат да се дадат проблеми. So, uh, Vishnu Shakabharti one place says that This idea of going through the stages of you know, Bajma Kriya, Anartana, Vritti, Nishtaruchi, Asakti, Baba, Prema, that is for people to commit Aparat. <laughs> the slow, gradual stage. Vishwana Chakravat Chakra объяснява, че цялата тази идея, че се примина през Нива от Шрада, Садо Санга, Бажна Крия и така нататък, е всъщност за хора, които извършват Апарат. And for the devotees that don't commit Aparat, then it becomes a more sudden process, not so gradual. А за тези преданни, които не извършват изпълнението, да, процесът е много бърз. Не е толкова постепенен и не преминават през такива разчленени етапи. Can it be started from the beginning of the, of the Shraddha? Yeah. yeah. It has to appear no. naturally. Theoretically, it can. In uh, Rag Bhattacharya, the Vishnu Chakra is just to begin your process after Shraddha with Rag if you're qualified. If you get that strong desire mm-hmm. at that point to follow, you do association of maybe previous lifetimes or whatever, then you could start with Rag Bhattacharya also. Now, the Rag Bhattacharya Практиката може да започне по-рано. Благодаря, че казвам, че е в Рагвармачандрика. Вишмата чака вас, ако казва, че Рада много може да започне след Шрада. Ако човек има много. Ако човек е квалифициран, има много силно желание или го е развил в някои предишни си животи. Но ако нямаме такава квалификация, тогава ние сме задължени да практикуваме Вайди Бахти. Вайди Бахти не е автоматично продължава Рага Нуга. Не е автоматично, просто Вайди и Но също Вайди Бахти не води автоматично до Рага Нуга. Така, ние ще Рага Нуга с асоциация с човека, който е бил Рага Нуга. И ние имаме инфлюенс и това е това. Ние ще развием Рага Нуга, ако общуваме с личност, която е Рага Нуга. 
И тогава той ще ни повлияе и тогава ние ще развием. Аз съм семейен и на мен ми е интересно как, как мога да разбера дали допускам а... дали допускам а... оскърбления или апарати към моя партньор. <laughs> well, I suppose uh, the main element in, in, in bhakti is turn out of his solution or up his solution. On the other hand, we should not think that Discipline is an apparatus. We shouldn't think that. For instance, temple president may have to tell me, you do this, do this, do this. And the person says, no, I don't want to do it, so you should do it. So that's not an apparatus. Or if a person is trying to give advice to another devotee on doing sadhana bhakti properly and the other person gets angry, that's not an opera also. So the apparat is when we have uh, intentional malice towards another person. So the, the, the our main process of for advancement is the chanting of the holy name. Mm-hmm. And uh, but to to get the highest uh, perfection out of it, which is uh, Raja Krishna, and the highest uh, types of rasa, we need to go to Raganuga ultimately. Yeah. And uh, how it manifests in in the process of chanting, like we just chant. Oh, okay. yeah. So that's described in the Nectar Devotion. Uh, Нашия основен процес за напредък в бхакти йога, основния елемент от практиката ни е повтарянето на святите имена. И въпрос е, а, а, за да постигнем най-висшата цел, най-висшето съвършенство а, в живота, което вчера чухме описанието на най-висшите цели, най-висшата раса, ние трябва в крайна сметка да следваме а, 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 раганога сада на бхакти и а, в процеса на мантруването как това всъщност се проявява. Това се обяснява в нетарна на предността. So the, 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 the sadhana there is largely internal. Sadhana в описна там е главно вътрешна. Yeah. We chant and then we also have what we call smarana, uh, meditation upon the pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan. Ние мантруваме и също имаме това, което нарича смарана или медитация върху забогледането на Кришна в Риндава. And particularly if we're attracted to a certain rasa, then we meditate on those pastimes with those devotees that are ideal uh, in those rasas like Subal or uh, Sakya rasa or something like that. И ако сме привлечени от определен тип забогледния на Бога, тогава ние това да медитираме върху а тези предано дани, които са съвършени в тази разкат, например, Субал, което е пример за всяки разкат. So, uh, we chant and then we meditate on the different pastimes and then eventually we can also meditate on service to those devotees in the pastimes. So we develop or we practice in our spiritual bodies so of serving those devotees. И също може да медитираме върху определено служене към тези предано дани. Така че 
така да можем да развием нашето духовно тяло. But generally this this type of attraction it will it will be it will come from association with yeah. И този тип привличане ще се появи от общуване с предно време. Okay.